Hey folks, uh, welcome back. This is nothing more than an introduction video to another really unique, cool looking radio, I believe, in my uh, collection. And I've never done a restore on it, so I just wanted to uh, share this with you in, in future videos. Maybe even before uh, winter officially gets here. This is a real simple design. A little ACDC TRF receiver. Uh, maybe we'll go ahead and tackle the uh, repair or restoration ahead of those Zenos. So you can see the uh, trade name on it. It's American. Uh, it's got a real unique dial. It appears there should be an discussion around this area that's missing. And um, I love this design here with this uh, like telephone dial uh, design in the center. Again, this is the uh, on-off control and volume and just the tuning here. And it appears it tunes from uh, around 550 uh, kilocycles up to 1700 and some change just looking at this. But a real unique design. You can see, uh, you know, when I looked at this cabinet, um, the first time I was wondering if it was, uh, you know, just handmade. So I'm not sure if it was made in a factory or somebody's repositioned this and just created this cabinet for this radio. If so, they did a very, very good job. I couldn't find any examples online. So I hope there's someone out there that watches this video over time and they can help me identify who actually uh, manufactured the radio. Take another look here at the cabinet as well. You'll see it's got some unique uh, design features here. And uh, one thing that's really cool, if this is showing up on camera, if you look at the top here, you'll see these finger jointed uh, cabinet. I don't think I've ever had a, a radio cabinet uh, in my collection that, uh, you know, that was finger jointed. So uh, this thing, as you can imagine, as old as it is and probably being beat around, assuming this is original, it's, uh, it's held together really, really well and sturdy, unlike a, you know, a lot of box style uh, radios for this uh, period of time. Let me flip it around here and again you can look at the side here. And that's a better look at the, uh, the finger jointed uh, cabinet design that I was referencing at the bottom and at the top. So really really unique and this other side is the uh, it's the same as you can see. So this thing really will be a beauty once it's fixed up and uh, actually the way it looks I may just leave it and just clean it up not even mess with the finish just to make it uh, you know show its age for uh, probably a early to mid 1930s radio. So I've never had this radio um, out of this wooden cabinet and the chassis itself looks to be in uh, fairly decent shape. Here's the uh, the line cord itself. Um, that does not look to be you know original but we'll see. But again, you can see, you know, the condition of the uh, line cord is uh, going to need to be replaced. And you can see here what appears to be the antenna coil. And again, this is a one, two, three, four tube radio. So it's, it's probably similar to a lot of the uh, early 1930 uh, TFR designs. I'm using an RF amp, a detector an output tube and of course the rectifier and there's a fifth tube back here and more than likely I mean it's got a metal case on it it's probably a ballast but we'll take a closer look at that that's what I would guess anyway anyway you can see here the uh, the tag on the radio and it shows it was made in the USA and that's the serial number uh, 25-448 what appears to be 44899 from this angle. So I think there's a couple screws here on the bottom that hold this chassis in place. Let me uh, remove those and get the knobs off the front. Let's pull this uh, this chassis out. Take a look at the tube complement itself 
and then uh, we'll flip it over and look at the underside of the radio and see if someone's been in there doing some repair at some point in time. Real quick here, here's the uh, knobs that were on the uh, radio. I've got these actually in reverse order. This was the uh, knob here listed as tuning, which sat on this shaft and the other. But they appear to be matching, so I don't know again if they're original or not. But um, I've seen a lot of uh, plastic uh, or bake-like knobs for this period of time that look very similar to this on radios for this period. So. Anyway, at least it's a matching set, and uh, it matches well with the uh, cabinet itself. And uh, believe it or not, there's like four holes underneath the uh, the wooden cabinet. Only one fastener that was holding the uh, the chassis to the cabinet, and uh, that's it. So I got this removed. And uh, anyway, let's pull this thing out now and check it out and see what the chassis itself looks like. These are always the uh, fun times, what I enjoy the most. Okay. I tell you, that's not in too bad a shape. Take one glance here in the back of the cabinet. And again, this thing is just solid as can be. And you can see the design there and how the uh, grill cloth uh, is in as well. And I would guess that's original. I don't see any markings inside the uh, cabinet to indicate the cabinet maker or the uh, anything relating to the radio itself. But Again, I'll do a closer uh, look at that under some better lighting. So let me get this off to the side and uh, let's take a look at this uh, chassis here. Hopefully this is showing up on uh, camera well. But um, here's the, uh, the front side and again the tuning. And it looks like Get something here by the speaker. Be careful with this. Okay, that's still attached and it's dry rotted. That appears to have been around the pilot light itself. And I'm assuming it was plastic or rubber at one time. And it probably was used as a light shield or reflector. To push the uh, light back here or just provide uh, protection from the heat from the pilot lamps against the speaker itself. See here there's some markings here on the speaker. It looks like a, a 1D6. And uh, that's pretty neat here. So you got the, uh, the tuning here. And again, the volume control's rather tight, so I'm gonna have to spend some time with that. Um, the speaker looks like it's a, probably a five inch speaker. Let me just check it to see. Yep, uh, five inches, which was pretty common for that period of time. And uh, here's that other tube that I had mentioned, or what I thought was a tube, and yep, that is a ballast. Um, I recognize the uh, that number. I think I've had a radio before that I did a repair that had that same uh, ballast tube in it. Looks like a 50A2. But overall, I'll kind of pick it up here so you can get a better look at the chassis itself. It's not in too bad a shape. There's uh, looks like more dust and uh, dirt and some grime on it versus any rust. So uh, that's a real plus. Probably uh, blow a lot of this off and uh, just use some uh, typical household cleaners and get this thing in decent shape would be my hopes anyway. So um, let's look real quick here at the, uh, at the tubes and then we'll move forward here with uh, looking underneath the chassis and see what we see. Okay, we'll get started here and uh, get this tube out. 
and it's um, it is fastened at the base and again not sure if it shows up on camera or not due to the lighting and the glare but this is the uh, rectifier tube the 25Z5 we'll set that off to the side this is more than likely the audio output tube you can tell by the size of it it's probably going to be a 42 or 43 tube and it's a 43 In, in addition, these uh, tube sockets are marked. So let me pick that back up and where you can see that on camera as well. And let's see what we got here. This probably is the it shows to be a C six C six six Charlie six. So that's going to be the uh, detector tube. It looks like there's a date on there. I uh, can't quite make that out. Something uh, nineteen. I can't tell if that's. Uh, 35 or 45. I'll grab my uh, magnifier here. We'll take a closer look at that. Let's see. These tubes are all mixed. Tongue sole triad. And this was an RCA for the rectifier. This looks like the ballast tube, and again, I'd already identified the markings on it from that front side, and it definitely is an old uh, rusted up 50A2, 50Alpha 2 ballast tube. Looks like it's made by a uh, triad. And this should leave the, uh, this lead goes back to the tuning condenser, so this would be your RF amplifier. And most likely it's uh, probably going to be a 66 or something for this period. This is typically what you would see. See if I can grab it down here at the base. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that's pretty cool. Another RCA tube. And uh, how neat is that? Hanks Radio Service, 723A, 7th Street. What is that? Greeley, Colorado. Phone number is 8. I'll have to do some research on that. Sylvania radio tube. And RCA Victor on the base. And there's the date sold. Date tested 419 something. We'll look at that closer. That's uh, really a neat uh, little piece to have on the tube. So this chassis is uh, not in bad shape at all. Again, you can see it's got some weight to it. The fuel coil itself here is, um, this is heavy. And the speaker is painted uh, brown. S someone recognizes the speaker type or manufacturer, let me know. It is stamped with a 3-0 on it. Maybe some other identification as well. And uh, here's the output transformer itself. All right, I think we spent enough time here on the top side as far as an introduction. I do want to zoom in here. Let me, uh, before we flip it over and look underneath here, let's look at this tag here on the back and I'll try to hold this up to the camera. 
where folks out there can see this and hopefully there's not tons of glare from my lighting and it may help out with the identification of the uh, radio and you can also see what appears to be I don't know if that's a tone control or a band switch um, it must be a band switch and here I'm cheating and looking at the underneath side but let me flip that around now so we can all look at that together but that switch goes to the uh, coil underneath so here's what we've got underneath so we've got two electrolytics here looks like we've got a, a 12 microfarad and a, a 16 microfarad and all the caps look to be original less this one right here and you can tell it's definitely not original Let's see who made that one anyway very very interesting and the radio also appears to use a choke unless this is the uh, output transformer I would think this is the choke itself uh, with its proximity to the rectifier tube so looks to be pretty well built again this thing is heavy as can be and you can see this is not the original line cord see if I can pull this through here and you can see where it's taped up and I'm not even sure this was original or not maybe so it appears to be an old rubber cord and you can see it's completely dry rotted itself so we'll get that squared away but th these radios are really fun to work on and uh, hopefully the uh, this, again, assuming this is the choke, it's good. Hopefully it's good. The field coil is good. The uh, output transformer is good. And these two coils are good. And uh, we can make this thing play again. So, folks, thanks for joining me. I just wanted to uh, share this other little neat uh, radio you know, with you guys. If you have any information on this particular brand or you've seen this particular cabinet before, you know, please let me know. I'm curious. Again, I did some research and uh, saw some stuff that was branded or trade name American. And I found some other examples online that look similar to a uh, maybe a Climax or a Clinton radio. But, you know, these schematics all come back to, you know, different uh, ones, automatic made radios that were very similar and used the same tube lineup as well as... Uh, uh, Pacific and others so again any uh, help you can provide in identifying you know the actual uh, manufacturing of the radio would be appreciated so just look for a, a future radio restoration or repair on this particular uh, radio I'll add it to my uh, playlist and uh, you know, we'll try to do something with it here maybe before um, I get started on those uh, Zeniths. Again, thanks for watching. I appreciate my new subscribers out there as well.